guests. And today I'm joined by uh, Shruti MP, who's an Associate Director within our Medical Writing Group, and Sarah Yelling, who's an Account Manager within our Patient Communications Group. Uh, Shruti has over 13 years experience in medical writing and has been with Paracel for more than five years and leads our Clinical Trial Disclosure Group. Um, an SME, a subject matter expert for lay language summaries at PowerXL. Uh, similarly, Sarah has been with PowerXL for uh, over 19 years and has a strong understanding of the medical communications industry. Uh, Sarah is engaged with our patient communications group and creates patient centric comms for clinical trials. So, both Sarah and Shruti, deep experts in representing clinical studies and clinical data to a lay audience, have been intimately involved in our response to the lay language summary requirements of the EU clinical trial regulation. So welcome uh, today, uh, Shruti and Sarah, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul. So um, let's dive into lay language summaries. And uh, my first question is actually to Shruti. Shruti, um, it's the EU clinical trial regulation and its forthcoming implementation that's making many sit up and take more notice of lay language summaries. What are the key requirements of an EU CTR compliant lay language summary? Thanks, Paul. So per the EU clinical trial regulation, a lay language summary must include 10 elements at minimum. Very briefly, it must include basic information about the clinical trial, the identification number, the name of the sponsor, contact details from the sponsor's organization, you know, in case additional information needs to be requested. It must also include other generic information about the trial, the, what's the population on the, on the study, what are the key objectives that are being assessed as part of the study, and also what are the medicinal products that, that are being used in the study. So apart from this, it's also mandatory to include the key results of the study, irrespective of whether or not they were favorable. Any adverse events that were reported during the course of the study, also the frequency at which they were reported. And finally, one must also include information on whether any follow-up trials are foreseen. Um, details on, on where additional information about the trial can, that, that can be assessed must also be included. So in most cases, we do add a link to the study results on, onto regulatory websites, such as clinicaltrials.gov or UDRAS-CT, um, CTI is to be. So this, these are the mandatory requirements, but in addition to these, we can also have other elements that are included, really depending on how meaningful they are to the lay audience. Uh, that, that's very helpful, Shruti. And so the EU CTR is providing a useful um, checklist, as it were, for preparing compliant lay language summaries. Obviously, there's a need to be compliant with the EU CTR, but for those sponsors who perhaps are transitioning more slowly into EU CTR, um, it does provide a useful uh, means to check that the lay language summaries that they're preparing are, are, are fit for purpose. Um, Sarah, I, I, I will turn to you now. Obviously, that summary that we've just described within the EU CTR has to be positioned in such a way, the core elements of, of, of the lay language summary has to be positioned in such a way that it's fully understandable by a, a, a lay audience. And here's where we talk about the notion of health literacy and some of the more novel approaches we can take to really ensuring that the information is received and understood by the target audience. Talk, talk me through some of the approaches that we can take the, the notion of health literacy perhaps. Absolutely. Thank you, Paul. So I'm going to start off with a quote from the World Health Organization on their, how they describe health literacy, um, which is the personal characteristics and social resources needed for individuals and communities to access, understand, appraise and use information and services to make decisions about health. So health literacy is more than being able to read a leaflet or make appointments or comply with any prescribed advice. So a high level of health literacy in any population will help people improve access to health information and have the capacity to use it effectively so they can make informed decisions about their own health. So health literacy is really patient empowerment and that's what we're all about at Parexcel with our Patients First initiative. Um, so here when, at Parexcel when we think about lay language summaries we look carefully about style, content, numeracy and cultural considerations of our target audiences 
to make sure that the messages we are writing resonate with as many people as possible. Um, so the ways we make that information interesting and engaging is that we connect with our patients using creative design and visualisation. And that's really key when you're communicating study results, which are complex and highly scientific. So if you've got off-putting slabs of text, unrelieved with any graphics, you're not going to reach patient audience successfully, basically. So we've broken up text with icons, graphics and images to make sure that content is really, really engaging. Um, we use icons a lot. They're simple. They're a really easy way to introduce sections of text or break it up, capture a key point. Um, and this is often used in combination with sort of short, punchy titles and short uh, passages of text. Um, we often repeat icons as well for things like procedures, body parts or study assessments. Um, they, this is a really effective way of getting information across in the same way, basically. Um, when we come to results, data can be really dry and difficult to understand. So we condense it and we simplify it in diagrams, charts, tables, infographics, anything basically to make it more visual. Um, and I think another good point is to make sure you correct, you check and um, use the correct colour palette. So if someone likes to read on screen, avoid your light colours. Think about people who might have visual problems. Um, so font style and size um, really need to be considered when you're being truly inclusive of your patient audience. Thank you, Sarah. Great advice. Obviously, what you're describing is taking us beyond that minimum regulatory requirement that the EU CTR sets out for lay language summaries. And obviously, we've got a lot of techniques and knowledge to, to, to land this right with the end user. Um, I know that you're engaged heavily with patient groups and patient advisory councils. One imagines that that could provide a, a useful forum for testing some of our approaches, right? Absolutely. And I think it's so um, important that Parkso have that, have the patient advisory council. I think that makes us quite unique. Um, we can contract patient advocates and advisors that have been part of those councils to help us review a lay language summaries. And again, that patient review is part of the mandatory requirements for the EU CTR. So the fact we have this bank of, of patient expertise at our fingertips at Pyrexel is just is just amazing. Excellent. Really, really exciting. Thank you for, Sarah, for sharing those in, insights, Sarah. Uh, really helpful. Um, back to you, Shruti. Um, Parkcell, obviously one of the largest global clinical research organisations, well known for conducting uh, clinical trials, um, perhaps less well known for um, the patient interaction that we've just discussed. Just, just discussed. You know, sharing information, ensuring full understanding and context in, in the benefits of clinical trials. Um, how do you think about the value that a CRO can bring in supporting lay language summaries? What is the advantage of a company such as Parexcel to uh, fulfilling these mandatory requirements and perhaps going beyond? Yes, thank you, Paul. I think the biggest value add here is experience. We've done this before. We've had some of our clients not only to create EU CTR compliant lay language summaries, but also really create in-house processes by providing consultancy services where they've been able to create templates, um, SOPs, and guidances for, for preparing these lay summaries. At Pyrexcel, we've also built an approach that combines medical writing uh, expertise with that of patient communications and medical communications. And, and we really bring all our expertise together to, to create this product. So we have medical writers who typically are involved in authoring clinical um, documents, such as protocols, clinical trial, uh, sorry, clinical study reports, and, um, and informed consent forms, which are also typically written in plain language. So they have the expertise in authoring in plain language, and they are also well versed with interpreting data with, with scientific accuracy. Um, that said, we also have patient communication experts. This is Sarah's group. They're skilled in developing patient-centric materials. They have, they have a huge amount of experience, and they also have designers and graphic artists that work on visuals and iconography for, for lay summaries. So we really work together to, to, to create this this um, document as such. In addition, as Sarah mentioned, um, we also do provide access to patient advisory councils. And this is a huge value add as it also helps in bringing the, the, the patient perspective into the document as, as it's being authored. Finally, I will say that we are a global team with a global reach. The entire medical writing solutions group comprises of more than 800 experts that are located in more than 25 countries. So this is one of the industry's largest medical writing teams with diverse expertise across therapeutic areas. And I think with all with, with this said, we're we're well placed to support lay summaries. 
Thank you, Shruti. Um, I wholeheartedly agree. Uh, of course, I'm revealing some bias here by um, celebrating the fact that we have a fully integrated team with regulatory as, as part of that um, enabler for these lay language summaries. Um, but very much what you're sharing is how we go beyond the mandatory requirements to ensure that we really land these in the right way, uh, tailored and bespoke to the to, to the clinical trial audience, which is very, very important. Um, we're coming to the end of our time now. Um, I'm going to ask you both one question, and that is, if there is one thing that a sponsor watching this video should take away from this video today, what would it be? And Sarah, I'm going to ask you that question first. What's the key takeaway for you? So I think Shruti touched on this, that uh, our lay language summaries are often templated, but I think a really important thing to realise here is that patients really aren't. Patients are truly right. unique. So if you really are after a patient-friendly lay language summary, one size certainly doesn't fit all. And while it's great to have a structure, um, content and design should really reflect the true uniqueness of your patient audience. Great advice, Sarah. Thank you. Uh, and Shruti, uh, the one headline message from our chat today for you? Well, I think it's important to think ahead and come up with a realistic strategy on, on how to really stay compliant with the EU regulation. And as Sarah said, while simultaneously, we're thinking patients first through and through while developing lay families.